Dude, you're such a great swimmer. My friends cheered for me as I showed off my swimming expertise. How did you learn to swim so well? The same way I learned to do every other sport so well. Your parents? Yeah. It's too bad that all that sports expertise is wasted on a fat boy like you. My dad suddenly materialized from somewhere, forcing us all out of the pool. Why don't you go show off your cake-eating skills to your friends instead? That will explain your weight, don't you think? Dad, I don't even eat cake. Whatever. You know, I'll love to eat some cake. Damien said, making me and Francis burst into laughter. Fine, let's go to the kitchen. I'll have the chef prepare something nice for you. Awesome! Sitting in the kitchen on top of a table was my little sister, Nadia. She was always in the kitchen with the chef. Her body was stained with different ingredients. It looked like she'd just finished painting a house. Nadia, not you in the kitchen again. I smiled at her. <laughs> Bolin, Damien, Francis. Yay, you guys are all right on time. I just baked this amazing cake. You? The chef asked with a mischievous grin on his face. Well, I came up with the idea for a banana mint cake and it turned out better than I expected. Thanks to Chef Augustine for doing most of the work, of course. And you losing most of the ingredients on your body. Our chef winked and we all laughed. Well, do you guys want a slice or no? Do we? Damien and Francis asked in unison, diving into the slices our chef offered them two seconds later. I used to love eating cakes more than anything, but now they just gave me PTSD. I always remember my parents telling me how eating anything like that would make me fatter than I already was, and it still makes me scared to disappoint them. Funny enough, I wasn't even that fat. I just didn't have the exact supermodel stature that both my parents had and wished for their kids. According to them, they had high hopes for me when my mom got pregnant. They thought that they were finally going to produce an heir for their legacy and a supermodel for their company. Someone who looked just like them and could take over the business without much stress. Unfortunately, I bounced out of the womb as a chubby baby, breaking the scale on my way out. Saying that my parents were disappointed would be an understatement. In their opinion, this was a problem and it had to be fixed. From the second I could eat normal food and aged up a little bit, I was given a personal trainer and dietitian as a birthday gift. I was forced to learn almost every kind of sport to lose the extra fat, but nothing ever worked. Not my diets, not my sports activities, and definitely not my personal training. No matter what I did, I just remained chubby and my parents hated this. When our family doctors advised my parents to cut me some slack because they could end up really hurting me if they didn't, they decided to simply give up on me and try again. This time, an even chubbier baby, my little sister Nadia bounced out of my mom's belly and beat my breaking scale record. Sad and distraught, my parents decided to keep pushing. They weren't going to give up. Nadia was gifted two personal trainers, dietitians, and sports teachers on different birthdays. Instead of focusing on why the meals that the dietitian was recommending were supposed to make people lose weight, all Nadia cared about was how they were made, how they tasted, the secret ingredients in the meals, and how to make the meals even better. Nadia was always on Chef Augustine's tail. Make something special for me, Chef Augie. What did you put inside this cake? It tastes so exotic. Can you teach me how to make ice cream? What is pizza? My friends are always eating it, but you never make it here. Can you make it for me? One day, Chef Augustine caved and decided to make pizza for me and my sister. Unfortunately, our mom caught us that day and fired him on the spot. We threatened to leave with him, but she and dad just laughed. And what makes you think that'll bother us? Wow, pure evil. Like and subscribe if you don't want your parents to ever act like mine. Chef Augustine was thrown out, and a new, stricter chef was brought in. This chef was so strict and disciplined that she even refused to make cheat meals for my parents, her employers. She told them that in a family of models, everyone had to eat healthily and stay fit. No cheating or favorites allowed. Long story short, she was also thrown out, and Chef Augustine was brought back with a warning. He refused to return if his salary wasn't increased and my parents obliged. We were so happy to see him when he came home that we jumped on him to hug him and stained his white clothes in the process. Oh my. No, 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 we stained your immaculate wear. Nadia almost cried. Our chef laughed. 
<laughs> Don't be silly, guys. Stain it all you want for today. I'm so happy to be reunited with you guys. <laughs> we laughed in excitement. Well, well, well. If it isn't the chubby crew. A voice said, spoiling all our fun and forcefully bringing me back to the present. Diosa, my sister and I said in contempt. Well, why am I not surprised that you guys are in the kitchen, binging on cake? What's wrong with cake? Or the kitchen. Or being together. Oh, binging! Damien said with a mouthful of cake, making all of us laugh, including the chef and the kitchen maids burst out laughing. To say the least, Diosa was irritated. She rolled her eyes and stormed out of the kitchen with her usual final sentence. Rugrats, no wonder your parents hate you. Diosa, our adopted sister, was created from pure evil. When my parents discovered that the problem was more from them than it was from us, they were incapable of not giving birth to kids that weren't chubby. The psycho award-winning supermodel but terrible parents decided to adopt a daughter who already had the genetics they wanted. Talk about being born lucky. It didn't bother my psycho parents that the character of the child they adopted was similar to that of an evil witch. Her inner beauty didn't concern them. All they cared about was the outer beauty she had. Diosa was a stunning model. Perfect face, perfect height, hair, skin, teeth, eyes, legs, and every other detail you can think of. It was a shame that her personality was the exact opposite of all these things, but it wasn't only her fault. My parents helped turn her into the person she became. We are the luckiest parents in the world to have such a beauty as our daughter. Thank you for choosing us. No, Dad, thank you for choosing me. Who would have ever thought that me, a girl with no family living in an orphanage, would end up living with such loving parents? Billionaires that are happy to take care of me and train me in the art of modeling. The only thing I've ever dreamed of since being born. I am the luckiest human in the world to be working as a model and with such lovely parents for that matter. Oh, stop it. I just can't because I'm telling the truth. If only these two fools, Bolin and Nadia, felt the same way you feel about modeling. If only they appreciated the art. But no matter, we have you and you're better than any one of them. We will give you whatever you ask for. All you have to do is ask. Thank you, Mom. I love you both. We, we love, love you, you too, too, baby. baby. My parents had never told me and Nadia that they loved us for once in our lifetime. When Diosa started winning multiple awards and competitions, our parents practically forgot that they had other children besides Diosa. At first, we kind of detested Diosa, but after hating her for years, we realized that it wasn't her fault. It was our parents. We ignored our parents' negligence and had to take care of ourselves, physically and emotionally. I tried my best to always give positive and reassuring words to my little sister, Nadia, and I think it worked because Nadia turned out to be one of the sweetest humans in the world. With the full support of our parents, Diosa did her very best to make our lives as miserable as possible. She knew that our parents loved her more than us, so she did whatever she could to remind us of that every single day. She played pranks on us all the time and we reported this to our parents, but who do you think our parents believed? You guessed it right, Diosa. Somehow, in a way that made absolutely no sense, Diosa was able to convince our parents that we were the ones playing pranks on her, and they believed her. Since we were alleged pranksters already, we decided to do due diligence. We started pranking Diosa. With the help of our friends, we were able to hurt her in ways she couldn't even imagine. In my opinion, three out of all our pranks were the absolute best. For the first one, we made Diosa's heels break during a catwalk in front of a large audience. Instead of just removing the broken shoes and walking barefoot like we expected, the idiot tried to keep walking with the broken heels and ended up breaking her feet. She couldn't walk for a month. The second one was the old dye and shampoo trick. Diosa's hair was bright green by the time she came out of the bathroom. And the third one was the best. We knew she was wearing undies and wasn't going to be totally embarrassed, so we set up a hidden fan in a way that blew away her wraparound dress while she was catwalking. She was wearing a short gown inside, but was still mortified. There was absolutely no way to trace these pranks back to us, but once Diosa accused us of the pranks, our parents believed her as usual and threw us out of the main house. We were relocated to the guest house in another building. 
but still in the same compound so Diosa could have the whole mansion to herself without any disturbance. After this occurrence, it became very clear to us that we could never win over our parents. We weren't interested in the modeling industry anyway, so it was fine. There was no need to keep trying to please people who couldn't be pleased, so we decided to focus on ourselves and our careers. I was very good with tech stuff and decided to start a software development company, while my beautiful plump sister Nadia loved everything that concerned food. She loved creating new, magical dishes, and her dream was to become a world-class chef. Luckily, Chef Augustine was always secretly there to help her build up her skills. He was the father we never had. I hardly ever celebrated my birthday, so I kind of forgot what day it was. I was turning 20 already, and life had turned around for both I and Nadia. My company had grown so much that my name and pictures were in different magazines all over the world, and Nadia's cooking YouTube channel was booming. She had written a best-selling cookbook and had already amassed a million followers. Our guest house was filled with equipment that had been given to Nadia for free as a result of brand deals and sponsorships. We were living the life and planning to move out as soon as possible. It was funny, but our parents were even making efforts to reach out to us now and inviting us to the mansion now and then, just because things were going well for us. Typical. Bolin, happy birthday! Nadia and Chef Augustine entered my office with a small cake. I laughed because I didn't even realize that it was my birthday already. Guys, you know I don't eat cake. I laughed again. I know, but please try this one for me. Chef Augustine pleaded. I agreed and burst into tears after tasting it because this was the cake I was eating when my parents insulted me for being chubby and made me fear eating cake. The cake was so good. Chef Augustine knew about this and comforted me. After that, I started loving cakes again. Diosa came to our guest house one day while Nadia was shooting a cake making tutorial for her YouTube channel. Um, what do you want? To learn, duh. Diosa shoved me and walked to the kitchen. Nadia allowed her to stay and watch the tutorial despite my constant reminders that it wasn't a good idea. After a few minutes of filming, Nadia excused herself, went to pee, came back and rounded up the video. She cut the baked cake and shared it, but Diosa refused to eat, saying, Cakes are only for fat, jobless people like you guys, before storming out. I stored my slice in the fridge because I had to round up on work first while Nadia ate hers immediately. To my surprise, Nadia fainted immediately after eating her cake. I rushed her to the hospital just in time and the doctors were able to save her life. They informed us that Nadia had been poisoned. Before I could react in any way, Chef Augustine suddenly arrived at our hospital room and turned on the TV. An angry mob filled with Nadia's followers was protesting in front of our house gate. Apparently, Diosa didn't realize that the YouTube tutorial was actually a live one. The camera was still on and recording when she poisoned the cake mix. All of Nadia's followers were there to see it. Diosa was arrested and charged with attempted manslaughter. Our parents begged us to drop the charges for their sake, and we did, but immediately moved out to an unknown location with Chef Augustine, never to come back again. Before leaving, we asked Diosa why she tried to kill us, and she said that she wanted to be the only successful one in the family. She was deranged. I'm glad that my mad family is finally behind me. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed my story. It really helps our channel out. Thank you.